Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike King, along with Speedway historian Donald Davidson. We welcome you to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Hall of Fame Museum and another edition of Indy 500, the classics. And Donald, today we turn back the clock to 1979. A lot of former winners in this field, but all eyes were on the gas man, Tom Sneva. Yeah, Tom Sneva had won the pole the previous two years for Roger Penske. Now he was with a different team, Jerry O'Connell, and tried to do something that had never been done before, win the pole three years in a row. Would Sneva be able to pull off this feat? Well, let's take a look as we drop the green flag on qualifying for the 1979 Indy 500. Bakersfield, California, driving his second 500, had won all the honors. At least 300,000 fans witnessed his stirring victory in person. More than 50 million saw or heard it on worldwide television and radio. This would indicate that there is something very special about the 500. It does, in fact, have significance for many different people. It means happiness to a young woman whose husband has just won the pole position. Satisfaction in pulling those rookie stripes from the car. Frustration in missing the race lineup. Tension, waiting for the weather to change. Danger, for a man who has just learned how hard the turn one wall can be. But the one critical factor they all share is time. The moment one race is finished, another begins. Time moves on, relentlessly, toward that next Memorial Day weekend speed classic which is the climax of Countdown to 500. Well, he saved that one and drove it into the pits. Larry Cannon is a very lucky young man. Gaius, veteran dragster, Indianapolis favorite. He will mend, but his car is badly bent. Still in all, the men of Gasoline Alley are used to miracles, mechanical ones at least. You've heard it before, the difficult we do immediately. The impossible takes a little longer. Who ever heard of measuring the outside of a tire to see how it'll perform at 200 miles per hour? The miracle workers of Gasoline Alley have no influence with the rain gods. On Sunday, the second qualifying day, the weather changed and the battle was on. A record number of entries and just 33 positions available for race day. He's won four 500-mile races in a row, here and at Pocono and Ontario. The four-lap average is 192.503 miles per hour. Get used to it, men. There's a very determined lady named Janet Guthrie now claiming a starting spot for her third Indianapolis 500. 185.720, that's good for the race. Yeah. 
right. there's usually one Unser waiting to see how the other is doing. Two-time Indy winner Bobby Unser is second to his brother. But after all, 500 miles is a long way to go, and anything can happen. Veteran Mike Mosley wins his starting spot. And now Tom Sneep, the two-time successive pole winner, tries for his third. 192.998 is fast time so far. Anthony Joseph Coit Jr. of Houston, Texas is heard from. You don't really suppose he's going to do something crazy like trying to win the 500 for a fifth time. Rick Mears, the last man eligible for the pole spot, takes his best shot at 4.39 in the afternoon. The wind is down. Conditions are just right. His speed of 193.736 knocks Tom Sneva into second starting spot. The jinx against three-time consecutive pole winners seems to be holding on. And Rick Mears, well, that four-lap, ten-mile ride was worth at least $5,000. And there's the front row. Mears on the pole, Tom Sneva in the middle, Al Unser on the outside. The scramble for the pole position is over. Now, it's a matter of just making the race. Todd Gibson comes away second best in a contest with the outside wall. Billy Engelhardt hits the short shoot wall and scrapes along clear into turn two. You could say this is definitely a case of rubbing your car the wrong way. Danny Ungaius as well has a new car and is able to go 188.009 miles per hour. There's considerably more to the 500 than the race. In recent years, the Miller Pit Stop Contest has enriched the teams considerably. But Johnny Rutherford is a source of embarrassment, considering his sponsor is a rival beer company. But not to worry. In this contest, Sneva's crew beats out Rutherford. Sneva's sponsor markets prune. Now, for the first time since 1933, qualifying is extended to more than the traditional 33 cars. Billy Vukovic wins the 34th spot. George Snyder is next. 185.319 is good for the race. They'll start 35 cars on race day. One last chance to make the show. And now even that is gone. Time runs out for this year. So Donald, a memorable qualifying session in 1979 as Rick Mears puts himself on the inside of row one. And uh, of course this was Mears' second start. He was on the front row in 1978, but uh, a lot of people still didn't know who Rick Mears was yet. And of course, before Rick Mears caught it quits, he would sit on the pole six times here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Time now to see how the young man does in the race. Let's drop the green flag on the 1979 running of the Indianapolis 500. It's sort of like going to the office in the morning. The thing that makes this job unique, however, is that thousands upon thousands of people show up to watch you work.
Balancer forges ahead. Sneva takes up second, and Rick Mears settles into third. and heading for the pit. Now it's Al Unser, Mears, Sneva. The front row still dominates. On the third time around, he turned the fastest leading lap of the race, 192.143. Jim McElreed heads in with a burnt pistol. George Schneider is smoking a burnt valve. Danny Gaia, starting in 27th position, has now moved up into the top 10 has now begun to lap the field. It's Johnny Parsons, son of the 1950 winner. He's out. Another burnt valve. Heavy traffic continues. There's still some 25 cars in contention. Hungaius makes a fast stop on the 24th lap. Lee Kunzman smoking and heading for the pits. Still Al Unser, Rick Mears, Tom Steva, and Bobby Unser. It's hard to believe this balancing act. Wally Dallenbach has lost a wheel, but he comes in on only two. The left front is in the air. The right rear hub is dragging. Still dominates, but Rick is never very far behind. Bobby leads from the 70th through the 73rd lap. his transmission while John sits in the car and waits. Al leads in heavy traffic and there's smoke coming from the rear of his car. It gets worse. Into the pits for help. It looks like the 1979 500 will belong to someone besides Mary Unser's youngest son. Unser and Rick Mears battle for first. In the 124th lap, they pit together. 13 seconds for fuel only. Back they go, and Bob. 
shot. He keeps the lead. And Tom Sneva is coming in with a dead engine. He rolls into his pit for a restart, but he's dropped to fifth. The race still belongs to Bobby Unser. Mears behind him. Hoyt is third. Umgaya is fourth. And somewhere in the confusion is Mike Mosley. A fast stop for Sneva in the 152nd lap. Turn two, Larry Rice almost keeps it off the wall. It's the 156th lap. Green for go. Rice's car sits in the infield, and Bobby still dominates. Mears and Ungaius battle for third. Suddenly, Bobby Unser is slowing down. He's lost his top gear, and now Rick Mears is the leader. family, they've been winning off-road races for years. Mother, Skip, and sister, Robin, wife, Dina, brother, Roger, out in California, and dad, Bill. Now, Tom Sneva tries to play catch-up. Approaching turn four, something breaks. The field is under the caution light. Sneva, shaken and frustrated, is okay, and it looks like a trophy dash is in the making. In the 195th lap, the green comes out. Rick Lee, Bobby is down one lap, and A.J. Foyt is still within striking distance of a fifth win. There he goes, but there's lots of traffic between him and Mears, and now there's less than five laps to go. The white flag. In turn three, Mosley passes Mears to unlap himself. There it is, the checker. The off-road star from California has done it, and on his second try. Boyd slowing down, coasting. Can he make it to the finish line before Mosley catches him? Second is not first, but not bad for a man going 50 miles per hour. Mike Mosley flies by, taking third. Boyd rolls to the end of the pits, and for the moment, the attention of the crowd is focused on the crusty veteran from Houston. He seems to have mellowed somewhat. He's certainly come a long way since that faraway day in 1958, when car owner Al Dean put an arm around him and said, It's okay, kid. There'll be other races. that race day for the drivers was sort of like going to the office. Except that a lot of people watched you work. Rick Mears didn't seem to mind all those people looking over his shoulder. And if he was feeling self-conscious about making racing history, he didn't let it show. But as the afternoon and evening following the race wore on, his hand hurt from being shaken, his back hurt from pats given by exuberant race fans, and he began to understand that his life had changed forever. For that's the way it is when a man wins the 500. He has achieved the highest pinnacle of success in his chosen profession. And for the rest of his life, he'll be just a little taller. His step, a little firmer. His smile, a little brighter. His confidence, a little stronger. For he is a champion and has earned his fame. Of course, $270,401 helps to make it all worthwhile. But Rick Mears must now come down from cloud nine, for the clock is running again. And already, they've started the next countdown to 500.
So, Donald, the decade of the 70s draws to a close here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway with a first-time winner and Rick Mears sitting in victory lane, but the crowd didn't stop cheering after the checkers fell for him. No, and it just goes to show that you don't have to be doing 240 miles an hour to get a cheer. Uh, Foyt had the engine let go in the final lap, and uh, there was some question of whether he was even going to be able to finish the final lap, and when he rolled over the line, he couldn't have been going about 20 miles an hour. And I think it's the loudest cheer I've ever heard. It was absolutely deafening. And then also the fact that Mike Mosley was able to unlap himself from Rick Mears in the last lap. He actually took the white flag twice. And when he took the checker, he was only two and a half seconds behind Foyt. Rick Mears, the winner of the 1979 Indianapolis 500. It would be his first of four victories here at the Brickyard. For Donald Davidson, I'm Mike King. We hope you'll join us again next time for another edition of Indy 500 to Classics.